time frame. And we'll start with Ian Culbert from the Canadian Public Health Association. Uh, good morning, Honourable Senators, and thank you for the invitation to present to you today as we discuss a substance that Canadians have been prohibited from using for almost 95 years. According to historians, cannabis was criminalized in Canada long before it was defined as a social problem. There is no record of parliamentary debate, no evidence of public discourse, and no paper trail as to why cannabis was criminalized. Much has changed in the past 95 years. Interestingly, Alcohol has been, prohibited, been a prohibited substance in every province and territory of this country at some point in the 20th century, but most of those prohibitions ended after only a few years. Even though alcohol's health risk profile compared to cannabis is much worse. The worst possible health risk profile, of course, is that of tobacco, a product that has never been prohibited. On behalf of the Canadian Public Health Association, I am encouraged and encouraged that the Government of Canada is committed to a public health approach to the legalization and regulation of cannabis, as is demonstrated in Bill C-45. This legislation will provide the governance structure to manage its sale, while the operational considerations will come, under, uh, come from the regulations that are currently under development by Health Canada. Uh, and today I will restrict my comments to the le legislation. The Canadian Public Health Association believes Bill C-45 and some of the provincial and territorial responses are steps in the right direction. As this country moves forward with legalizing cannabis, we must keep in mind the lessons learned by other jurisdictions that have traveled this road before us. Regulators must be flexible and ready to adapt to changing conditions in the marketplace. Upfront investments in health promotion are essential. <coughs> Law enforcement and public health need to work together. And importantly, the interests of the private sector that profits from the manufacture and sale of cannabis are rarely aligned with the interests of the public health. I have had the opportunity to review the transcripts of some of your previous hearings and will use my time today to address some of the public health concerns committee members have raised. You have heard that the country is not ready for legalization. Unfortunately, we do not have the luxury of time as Canadians are already consuming cannabis and the individual and societal harms associated with cannabis are already being felt every day. We need this legislation now to help minimize those harms and protect the well-being of Canadians. You have heard concerns about the legal age of 18 for the consumption of cannabis. The Canadian Public Health Association supports this provision given the large number of youth who are already consuming cannabis and we recommend that provinces and territories establish a legal age for cannabis that matches their alcohol consumption age. This will reduce confusion and help coordinate education efforts. Concerns have also been raised about the impact cannabis consumption has on the developing brain. While the study often quoted is a piece of the research puzzle, it focuses on young people who are daily and heavy cannabis users. I think we can all agree that if a youth is consuming a large amount of cannabis on a daily basis, there is a cause for concern. If a youth is consuming, uh, drinking alcohol heavily on a daily basis, there would be a similar cause for concern. From a public health perspective, we need to know why that child is consuming heavily so we can focus our interventions accordingly. In this situation, the problem isn't cannabis. The problem is a larger emotional, physical or mental health condition. Some committee members have questioned whether or not this legislation will reduce the number of people using cannabis. Now I think undoubtedly there will be a short-term spike in consumption immediately following legalization as curious Canadians either try cannabis for the first time or former consumers return to a safer regulated marketplace. The concern, however, speaks to our understanding of how many Canadians, and specifically young Canadians, are currently using cannabis. You're all familiar with the statistic that 21% of 15 to 19 year olds have rep reported use in the past year. This seems like a large number, even though it does mean that 80% of the same cohort has not used cannabis in the past year. The statistic is a national figure, and it is the best one we have. However, a study of Ontario students done by the Centre for Addiction and Mental Health found that only 1% of students in grades 7 to 12 reported using cannabis daily in the past month. Only 1%. Now 
Now, I'm very concerned about that 1% because they are most likely facing some kind of trauma, the pain of which they are trying to numb with cannabis. This is where our attention should be focused. The Canadian Public Health Association supports the current leg legislation because legalizing cannabis will facilitate harm reduction initiatives that prioritize efforts to minimize the harms associated with consuming cannabis. <clears throat> harm reduction could include in providing a, a product of known potency and quality, uh, providing effective health promotion activities, education about safer consumption methods, and promoting the lower risk cannabis use guidelines. An important element of those lower risk cannabis use guidelines is, is the recommendation to avoid smoking cannabis and use al alternate delivery methods such as vaping or edibles. Of the two, vaping is preferred as edibles have their own unique risks. It is unfortunate that the current legislation doesn't deal with either of these alternatives, but the one year delay in regulations for these products is both reasonable and understandable. Concerns have been raised about home the home cultivation provision in the legislation. The fact is, Canadians have the right to grow their own tobacco and produce their own alcohol in their homes. As such, there is precedent that would make the prohibition of home cannabis cultivation susceptible to a court challenge. Furthermore, growing tobacco and producing alcohol at home carry comparable risks to growing cannabis at home. Yet we do not have an epidemic of child poisonings or other negative outcomes. Law enforcement agencies suggest they are not ready for legalization. I should say some law enforcement agencies, uh, particularly with regard to uh, driving under the influence. Given that a large number of Canadians are already consuming cannabis illegally, it is reasonable to, to assume that some of them, hopefully a small minority, are driving under the influence. If we aren't seeing a raft of cannabis-related collisions today, we most likely we will not see that happen post-legalization either. If legalization is delayed, then the important health promotion and education work that almost all of your witnesses have recommended is delayed as well. Health and social service practitioners cannot counsel Canadians on lower risk cannabis consumption techniques if the consumption of cannabis remains illegal. Yes, we need more research. Yes, we need more health promotion activities. Yes, we will face challenges and need to rethink our approaches. But none of that can happen until Bill, Bill C-45 is passed by the Senate and re receives royal assent. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now... Uh...